Millions of, of uh, men now uh, who are considered, we, we call them in my community, formal, formerly incarcerated individuals who have uh, been released from jail. And we know that the recidivism rate is very high, and part of the reason is because there is very little employment for these individuals. And so we have to provide support for our reentry initiatives. And I'm very uh, proud of the fact that Congressman Danny Davis, a member of the Congressional Black Caucus from Illinois, continues to work on behalf of those who would not have this second chance. And so we passed the Second Chance Act a couple of years ago, but we must fully fund this so that we can provide for that job training and those jobs for formerly incarcerated individuals. Also, our disconnected youth. We have young people who need jobs. Many uh, families now, because of the fact that mothers and fathers are unemployed, uh, oftentimes young people have to help. Uh, and they deserve to be able to uh, get a job, too. And so we have to fully fund and support summer uh, job programs for our young people, which I'm very proud of the fact that uh, President Obama, Speaker Pelosi, and all of our leadership here, uh, our majority whip, Mr. Clyburn, supported with the uh, economic recovery package to make sure we had funding in there for uh, our summer jobs program for youth. Also, access to health care. Uh, some of us believe, I know many of us in the Congressional Black Caucus believe that uh, health care should not be um, a privilege. Uh, it's a basic right. It's a basic right. And as we begin this health care debate, again, we cannot forget that closing health care disparities in communities of color must be part of any health care reform package. Otherwise, uh, those communities, those individuals who have historically been uh, discriminated against in our health care system, and really that's what has happened over the years. Uh, it, it has been discrimination. Uh, they deserve to have some of these gaps closed, and so this has to be part of any, um, again, part of a comprehensive approach to uh, job creation and employment. So let me just conclude by saying that during this economic crisis, uh, we think that we have to see this also as an opportunity to make the changes that we seek, some of the systemic changes that we seek to guarantee access to health care, to guarantee and ensure fair and adequate housing for all, and to provide top flight education for all of our children and support the growth of the new green living uh, wage economy uh, that will carry America into the 21st century. Uh, we have to support the Employee Free Choice Act because many of us in the African American community know that if it weren't for, or if it hadn't been for labor unions, uh, many of our families would not have become uh, middle income. And so the right to organize, the right to participate, and to be in a union is essential because when we're talking about jobs, we're not just talking about uh, a job, but we're talking about a job with justice, jobs with good paying, with, with benefits, with uh, a pension, with health care, the type of job that any American so deserves. And so this Employee Free Choice Act is an extremely important part of any uh, jobs movement that we have developed here in the Congress. And so the Congressional Black Caucus uh, continues to be the conscience of the Congress, and we're going to continue to speak out and work with those who don't have a voice, who have been marginalized, and who could possibly be left behind uh, were it not for members of the Congressional Black Caucus who stand strong, 42 of us, uh, in um, moving forward an agenda. Uh, opportunities for all uh, pathways out of poverty. Let me thank uh, Congresswoman Marsha Fudge again for uh, stepping up to the plate and for bringing this very critical debate um, once again on a Monday night to the country. Thank you.